from leaning not on our own understanding to casting down wicked imaginations. We're here to study to show ourselves approved here a little and there a little. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Stick to the Script. Let's read the Bible now. Grace and peace, brothers and sisters, and welcome to another edition of Stick to the Script Bible Talk Show, where we teach from a biblical perspective, precept upon precept, line upon line, here little and there little. Please subscribe to our page, like, share, and uh, go grab some to jot these scriptures down because we move rather rapidly through the scripture. This is an Israel of God production coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona. We are Christian Israelites, that's right, Christian Israelites who keep the commandments of God and the faith in Jesus Christ. Today reading for us, we have our very own brother Judah and also from our Birmingham class we have our guest teacher today brother Josh will be joining us and from uh, Phoenix here at our local campus we have elder brother Jedediah and me myself and I just want to go over and greet the panel and ask these guys how they doing today how you doing my brothers bless 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 peace in Jesus name my brother Peace Praise to you all. Good, doing, good to be here once again. Yes, sir. So good to yes, be sir. here. Thank it's you, a blessing, man, yes, to be here to try to edify Israel. It's a blessing. I'm just glad to be here. Yes, sir. I want to get edified as well myself. So today's topic, brothers and sisters, is a message <clears throat> of love to the unbelievers. A message of love to the unbelievers. And this is... Uh, a title that's coming from our dear brother Josh, and he's going to kick us off with the first leg. So go ahead and take it off, brother. Take, take it over, brother Josh. I apologize for that. Thank you. Thank you, brother. No apologies whatsoever. Um, again, as the title said, a message of love to the unbeliever. We live in a time now that there are so many distractions, so many doctrines out there, and people have given up on God when God has always been there for all of us. Everybody, by the way, not just Israel. So I want to start this off first by just asking a few questions in Job chapter 38. These questions I didn't write. These questions uh, the Lord had uh, written. So we're going to actually ask the unbeliever. Let's ask you these questions and see what you can surmise with these. Job 38, we're going to read verses 1 through 6. When you get it, my brother, please read. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? And the Lord is t making a step saying, I'll tell you what, if you want to question me, then answer these questions for me. Go ahead and read. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. So even to the unbeliever, this is not a knock to you at all. But please, can you answer these questions? Where were you when all of this was being created? Go ahead and read. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Once again, he's being fair by saying, if you don't believe in me or if you want to question what's going on, if I exist, answer these questions for me. Go ahead and read. Hath the rain a father or who hath begotten the drops of dew out of those out of whose womb came the ice and the hoary frost of heaven? Who hath gendered it? Now, and have these elements have a father. To a degree, yes, because they have a creator. But again, asking those same questions. Skip down and read verse 35 through 41. Canst thou send lightnings that they may go and say unto thee, here we are? Who hath put wisdom in the inward parts? Or who hath given understanding to the heart? Who can number the clouds in wisdom? Or who can stay the bottles of heaven? When the dust groweth into hardness 
and the clods cleave fast together. Wilt thou hunt the prey for the lion or feel the appetite of the young lions when they couch in their dens and abide in the covert to lie in wait? Who provided for the raven his food when his young ones cry unto God, they wander for lack of meat. So who creates all this and who even provides for the beasts of the earth? We're about to find out in this next spot. Genesis chapter 1, we'll read verse 1 and skip down to 15. Genesis 1 and 1 and then 15. My brother, edify the family. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Oh, so that's who did all this. So for the unbeliever, the answer is here, but maybe there's some more convincing that needs to go on. Skip down and read verse 15 through 19, my brother. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Mm-hmm. And God sent them in the firmament of the heaven, set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God yes, saw sir. that it was good. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So all this reading, you know, for unbeliever, they might say, well, I don't want to do all this reading, but this reading is showing you that he created all this stuff. Even when you look in the sky in the day and the night, you see these lights and he lets you know how a day operates. And we all operate no matter where we are, who we're, where we're from, we operate on the same system. So we might need to pay attention to this God that created the heaven and the earth, but just to help you out more, to show you and to confirm that he is the one that created all things. Let's go to Psalms 19, we'll read one verse, verse one. Psalms 19 and one, our brother, when you get it, please edify the people. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showed his handiwork. The Saying the phrase, the proof in the pudding is an understatement. This is who created all things and this is who we're dealing with right now. So to the unbeliever, if there is a God, there is one because he, the, the, everything that you see, he created. Furthermore, let's go and show you somebody else he created. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 to 28. When you begin to my brother, edify the people. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and mm -hmm. female created he them. And God mm -hmm. blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So if you don't believe in God, your own existence actually says he exists because he created man in his own image and you see male and female, he created he them. Not male, female, and transgender, by the way. Male and female created he them. And then the dominion, the power to manipulate and to do things on this earth, he gave it to mankind. So we prove God's existence by the things that we do and the fact that we exist. But if that is not enough, let's show you how how magnificent he is with man's creation or let's say development let's go to ruth chapter 4 and we'll read verse 13 ruth 4 and 13 because one thing about god he is who he is and he can do whatever he wants to do including provide conception ruth 4 and 13 when you get it my brother go ahead and read so boaz took ruth and she was his wife and when he went in unto her the Lord gave her conception and she bare a son. Oh, so it wasn't because the brother played some slow jams and had the nice cologne on that made her get pregnant. God did this. God gave the conception. And if it's so hard to believe that he can do so, even when the child develops, God has that knowledge as well. And man does not, by the way, no matter what kind of degree you have. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 11. We're going to read verse 5. Ecclesiastes, which is right after Proverbs for all our listeners and viewers, Ecclesiastes 11 and verse 5. When you get it, our beloved brother, please read. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, 
nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so, thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. You don't know it. To the unbeliever, you do not know this. God knows how to do all this. Therefore, why don't you jump on his bandwagon and roll with him? He knows how to develop a child and we don't understand it. We might have all the clips, all the videos, all the textbooks, but God knoweth them all. So because God knoweth them all, there is something else he knows. Man should have a choice in this life because he created them. Let's roll to Genesis chapter two, we'll read verses eight through nine. So man has a choice to choose God now that he knows he exists, if you choose to believe in God. Genesis uh, 2, 8 and 9, when you get it, my brother, please read. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had, whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God has given man that he's created, by the way, we, we got to give him credit now. He's created. And now you have a spirit, you have a physical diet, eating herbs and a spiritual one who, whom you will listen to, whether you want to choose life or not. Now we're going to roll right over and we're going to see that man did not choose to eat from the tree of life. And he chose the alternative and God lays a sentence on him. Genesis chapter three, verse 22 through 24. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and edify. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. <clears throat> Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now, as we turn to Genesis chapter six, I want to expound on what this brother just read. We got evicted from the garden, all right? And now we have cherubims keeping us away from the tree of life, not from the garden, but from the tree of life. So now sin is on the table and actually death is on the table because if you don't choose a tree of life, you choose the alternative, death. And so because death is here, now man is, 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 is in a fallen state and Actually, his time gets cut down because of his disobedience. Genesis 6 and verse, excuse me, Genesis 6 and verse 3. 6 and 3. We get it, my brother. Go ahead. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. And a hundred and twenty is, I don't care how much ginseng you take. A lot of us aren't making it to that. So we even fall shorter than that. But now man is in a downward spiral of death. And because of that, there there's sin. And guess what? Sin is prevalent for all. Let's go over to Romans chapter 3. We'll read verse 23. Romans 3 and 23. Will you get it, my brother? Edify the family. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And all have sinned, including Israel, including the Hamite, the Gentile, and everybody else, including the atheists, by the way, all have sinned. Now, if because all have sinned, there's a problem with that. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 23. When you get it, my brother, help these people out. Go ahead and read. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So because we're all jacked up, I'm sorry, go ahead, finish that last part, brother, go ahead. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And, and, and thank you, brother. So because we're all jacked up and we're all sinning and the wages of sin is death, not just in this life, but the life to come. Now a gift has been presented. Jesus, the Christ. Praise God for that, for the believer and for the unbeliever. Let's go over to Matthew 25 and we'll expound more on this. This is Matthew 25. And verse 46, Matthew 25 and 46, my brother, when you get it, go ahead and read. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So now we see what happens with the decisions we make. If you want to believe, you have everlasting life. If you do not want to believe and be an atheist or unbeliever, or agnostic, whatever, you have an everlasting punishment. I don't want that for, from you. I don't care if you're a Klansman or you're the a hood brother on the street corner. I don't want anybody to go to the lake of fire because that's the reality of it. But there is an option 
if you don't want to go that negative route. John 3.16, my brother. Everybody knows this. People have a tattooed on them, but a lot of people don't really understand the gift that's been given, and it's Jesus Christ. John 3.16, when you get it, my brother, go ahead and read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you believe in Jesus the Christ, unbeliever, if you believe in him, you will not burn forever. It's not hard. You can have a good time in life, but keep the commandments. And he is offering Jesus to you. If you do believe in him, you will not perish eternally, but you have everlasting life. And to back this up more, let's go to Matthew 19. We're going to read verses 16 through 17. Matthew 19, 16 through 17, because as an unbeliever, you may say, well, what do I need to do? Because you told me to believe in Jesus. Is that it? There's a package deal here. There's a faith within Jesus, but there's some works also. Matthew 19, 16 through 17. Will you get it, my brother? Go ahead and read. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments and he's not taking anything away from the father i mean anything away from himself by saying there's none good but god but jesus was in the flesh at this point for all the muslims out there that say well he can't be god he is god he just came down to die for us but he says if you want to live eternally keep the commandments and before then we read where well, we had to believe in him so to show you the end result of doing both Let's go to Revelation 22. We'll read 14 and 15. Revelation 22, 14 and 15, because there's a reward for everybody, good or bad. And we're going to find out right now for the believer and the unbeliever. You got to stay on track and do this. Revelation 22, 14 and 15. Will you get it, my brother? Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. For the unbeliever, this is the this is the formula for salvation. If you want to enter into the kingdom, keep the commandments. If you do not, you will see what happens to you. So choose life and live. Thank you, my brothers. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen, praise amen, 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 amen. Bless the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Love it, praise love it. Lord. Amen, brother. So uh, I like Brother Josh. You started off uh, and you showed like Job, Job said in Job 9 and 3, if God will contend with man, he cannot answer him one of a thousand questions. You see what I'm saying? So if, if you are an unbeliever, you are darkening counsel like you said. Job 38 and 2 by words without knowledge. You see what I'm saying? And I like when you showed that, Brother Josh, because God, he asked this man, even Job, all these questions, and Job couldn't even answer him one of a thousand. You know, he took the test and he, he failed. You see what I'm saying? And God presented a great number of questions to Job, just like he can do to this man. You know what I'm saying? And man, he won't be able to answer them. So let alone for one to have the audacity to even disbelieve in the true and living God, even though you show that God created all things and by him all things consist. So if one doesn't uh, have an explanation of why things is and why they came about, then you need to, uh, you need to search this thing and figure out who is the cause of the sun in the sky, the moon at night. I'm down, like you showed Amen, about uh, the rain and 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 it, it has a father, you know what I'm saying? How was it concocted? How was it made? How do it, you know what I'm saying, function within our lives? If you can't explain that, you need to research this thing and I bet you retract that, uh, that mind frame of being a non-believer because the true and living God exists and we can see it by things that we see in life, even by what you showed in Genesis 2, that he created us. We are a prime example that God exists. So I thank you for that, Brother Josh, and I turn it back over to the panel. 
Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's for real, brother. And I thank you so much, man, for those scriptures, brother. It was a great way to kick, it, kick this uh, precept off. And uh, I like, man, um, the scripture uh, that you presented in uh, Ecclesiastes uh, 11 and 5, because the unbeliever cannot acknowledge or recognize the majestic power of the Lord. Uh, as it says in uh, Ecclesiastes 11 and 5, as, uh, as thou knowest not what the way of the spirit uh, and not know, you know, how the bones are grown in the womb uh, 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 of a woman, you know, um, they know not the works of the, of, of the Lord. And also without acknowledging his, maj his majesty, they have no understanding of what's written in 1 Timothy 3 and 16, which is without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. And they, it just, you know, it just goes right over their head. And they are, as the scripture says in 80, Psalms 82 and 5, um, they know not, neither will, can they understand. Uh, they walk in darkness. They are out of course. So the unbeliever has no chance of knowing God or understanding his works or his ways without seeking him. But I thank you, brother, for bringing all that out. And I turn it back over to the panel. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Yes, Jesus sir. name. Amen. So what we're going to do, we're going to kick it off with the second leg. And this is what the Lord put hard, uh, brother Josh, concerning your title, because you did bring out, you know, we had to keep the commandments if we want eternal life when you showed in Matthew 19. I mean, yeah, my, Matthew 19, verses 16 and 17. So I'm going to give you a message of love concerning what the Lord put on my heart about this title. John 15 and 12. Go ahead and read that, my brother. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Right. So we love one another. That don't just include the people of faith. You know what I'm saying? We supposed to show charity to everybody in this creation. John 3 and 16. Go ahead and read that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's what Brother Josh was pointing out. Like, if you believe this thing, you're going to get everlasting life. And God said he, he wants us to love one another like he has loved us. So with his love, he sent his only begotten son to redeem us from the fall in the Garden of Eden, like Brother Josh showed you. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead and read, my brother. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. See that message to the, of love to the unbeliever? If you don't believe, he didn't send his son to condemn us. Even though you disbelieve God, he sent him here so you could be saved. Let's go to uh, 1 John, the fifth chapter, and show you that. This message been on the table since Adam, like Brother Josh showed when God created man. Go ahead and read. This then is the message which we have heard of, of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and deny the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's right. So we have to believe that we got errors. We got imperfection. And the message of love to the unbelievers, the Lord is saying that, look, you know, don't deceive yourself. Confess that you have sin, and he is faithful to forgive our sins. You see what I'm saying? And this this my message of love to the unbeliever. We all have shortcomings. 
And if you believe this thing, the Lord will cleanse you of your imperfection and he will save you. So this is the message of love that I'm sending to you, brothers and sisters, that disbelieve. Let's go to 1 John 2 and 2 and read that and show you what Jesus is. Go ahead and read. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. See, not for us only brothers and sisters though we believe this thing he he died for 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 us as well as the unbelievers so take advantage of this grace that the father has p provided for the world and stop disbelieving the word of god and get your sins remitted let's go to psalms 103 and 8 psalms 103 and 8 and watch what david say about the lord the lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger and plenteous in mercy so when i seen josh title i was thinking about scriptures like this like brothers and we pleading to y'all we beseech y'all if you don't believe this thing the lord he's slow to anger he'll give you time and he plenteous in mercy he will be merciful turn yourself around and believe because those that believe Jesus is able to heal you. That's why he wasn't able to heal a lot of people because they unbelief. You see what I'm saying? Read verse 10, brother uh, Judah. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Love to the unbeliever. We, got, we ain't got paid for what we really deserve, you know what I'm saying, concerning the sins we have sinned against him. Come on to this thing now. God has given us a chance. Go to Luke, the sixth chapter, and pick it up at verse 36, my brother. And he's going to tell us how to operate to our brothers and sisters as well. Be ye therefore merciful, as your father also is merciful. So Judge we not. Gotta, we got to exemplify the same mercy to you, just, <clears throat> just like we want mercy. Go ahead and read, my brother. Judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, mm -hmm. and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. You see that? See, we're not here to judge you. If you don't want to believe this thing, we're not judging you. We ain't going to condemn you for that. That's God's office. We're going to leave that to him. We're going to be merciful to you and try to give you this message of love to tell you to repent and turn unto God. You see what I'm saying? Or else he going to judge you. And he going to condemn you. You see what I'm saying? Second Peter, the first chapter, and pick it up at verse 8, Brother Judah. For if these things be in you and abound, they make ye, they make, I'm sorry, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, that's but why we don't condemn these people. Things, that's why we don't condemn people, Brother Judah. That's why we don't judge people, because we trying to be a, 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 a minister for the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, and show that we are bearing fruits of the Spirit to extend that love to you. Go ahead and read, my brother. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. That's right. So if we come and trying to condemn you, like, oh, you're an unbeliever, you're going to lose your salvation, you, you're going straight to the lake of fire, we forget that the Lord purged our sin. So we're trying to continue to run this race, and we want you to get up when you fall and believe this thing so you can run with us, and we all going to obtain the prize. Matthew 7 and 12, read that for me, my brother. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. That's right. We going to do to you what we want done to ourselves. You see what I'm saying? We, we want to get helped up in the time of uh, adversity. We try to help you up with this word. Matthew 28, please believe this. And 19, go ahead and read. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. See, we're not here to condemn. We're here to teach, to show you the way by the words of God, not by our own opinion. Ezekiel 2 and 6, my brother, and this is what the Lord tell us. 
Even if you don't believe this thing, even if you don't want to hear this thing, watch what he said to Ezekiel. Go ahead and read in verse 6. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Right, because people that don't believe this thing, they, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes they could come at you with harsh words. The Lord say, don't be afraid of their words. You know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid of they look. They look at you sideways, mean muggy, because you're trying to give them that truth. You still got to go and service these people. This is the love that the Lord is providing for you because he sent us a sheep uh, in the midst of wolves, but we got to go out there. This That comes with the territory of our job. Second Corinthians 4 and 4, and this is why a lot of people don't believe. Go ahead and read. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Right, so Satan has blinded your mind, sisters and brothers, if you don't believe this thing. And our message of love to the unbelievers that we trying to bring you to the light out of that darkness because Satan is on you, whether you know it or not. Ezekiel 2 and 5. So this is our objective in teaching this thing. Go ahead and read. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. We're not saying that we prophets. We read the words of the prophets and the apostles, the testimony, you know what I'm saying, of what the prophets, you know, written. But whether you hear it or whether you forbear, we got to give you that word of the prophet so you can recover yourself. You see what I'm saying? With this truth, Romans 3 and 3, my brother. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Even though you disbelieve, the Lord's word is not going to go come back to him. Boy, the lake of fire, somebody going in there. The kingdom of heaven, somebody getting in there and getting that eternal life. So whether you believe it or not, the word of God is not going to be, you know what I'm saying, of no effect. It's going to take part. It's going to happen. Ephesians 2 and 2, my brother. So the reason why we don't condemn people and we bring this message of love to the unbeliever because we have to remind ourselves of this. Go ahead and read two, Ephesians 2 and 2, my brother. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. See, in time past, we walked in the same manner after the prince of the power of the air, after the God of this world, you know, which is the same spirit that's working in the unbelievers or the people that disobeyed the true and living God. Go ahead and read. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Even just like y'all, that's how we was, but we trying to come up out of this thing. We're not saying we any preeminence over nobody or we cleaner than anybody. No, we're just trying to get better, and we're trying to bring a lot of people with us so we could bear fruit to the true and living God and present, them, present it to them. When he when he show up and not had our talent in the ground and and not get interest off of it, let's go to Psalms the seventy eighth chapter and show you when we disbelieve God, but He had compassion on us, and that's why we having compassion on you, and that's why this is a message to the unbeliever of love. Go ahead and read twenty two, my brother, and twenty three. Because they believed not in God and trusted not in His salvation, though He had commanded the clouds from above and open the doors of heaven. See, see how he loved us and provided for us, we, yet we didn't believe him or trust in his salvation. 26 to 27, my brother, go ahead and read. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven, and by his power, he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh upon, also upon them as dust and feathered fowls like as the sand of the sea. 
because they was hungry. They wanted flesh. They ain't want manna food. They want they ain't want the angel food, the manna from heaven. Twenty nine, my brother, read to uh, thirty two. So they did eat and were well filled, for he gave them their own desire. They were not estranged from their lust, but while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all this they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous works. That's right. Skip up to verse 21, though. Let's see some. Go ahead and read. Therefore, the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and anger also came up against Israel. Because they ain't believe in their God or what he could provide for them. Verse 34, my brother. When he slew them, then they sought him, and they returned and inquired early after God. So they started killing the people, but notice God, he got compassion. 38 and 39, my brother. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered mm -hmm. that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. He remembered that these people ain't nothing but flesh, so I got to have some compassion on them because he a merciful God. Romans 11, 29 to 32, my, my brother. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain, obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. So through Israel disobedience, the Lord, you know, and they unbelief, the Lord gave a way for the Gentiles to be grafted in to provoke them to anger. You see what I'm saying? But through they fall, it's the uh, resurrection of the world to back to bring them back to God or to recover the world. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Should I say, as opposed to the resurrection? But everybody gonna be resurrected, but. To put it in a nutshell, for God have concluded all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all. So this thing is for everybody. This is a message of love to the unbelievers. And God don't have no pleasures in the wicked that he, he should die, but that he should return from, from his way and live. And I turn it back over to the panel. Amen, 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 amen brother. Amen. Great presentation. Fantastic. Great present, yes, I love that man. Great presentation, and in uh, Luke uh, six uh, and thirty-seven, you read uh, where it says, "Judge not, yet ye shall not, uh, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven." But this seems to go right over the head of the unbeliever. You know, uh, judgment is inevitable. Uh, but that judgment comes at the end of our journey among men. They don't understand that this life is a temporal life, you know, according to God. Right. God, God loves, uh, I mean, but God says uh, because of his love, but he will reprove, reprimand, he will rebuke all unrighteousness among men. The unbeliever mm -hmm. is synonymous with unrighteousness. And as it's written in mm -hmm. Hebrews 9 and 27, as it says, um, it is, you know, appointed to man to die once and then that judgment. Uh, they don't uh, have any knowledge that there's uh, more than one death. There's a death that we fall asleep in. They, they, this, they don't have this knowledge, the unbelievable. And because there's also a death unto un, uh, eternal damnation. This goes right through them they don't understand these things so you know i pray for the unbeliever that he does come uh, to uh you know the knowledge of the lord and the lord mm -hmm. will have mercy on him so i thank you brother for your presentation and i'll turn it back over to the panel glory to god in jesus name brother. amen amen amen, amen. amen brother. 
great, great stuff, brother. Uh, just as the brother said, uh, going back to that Luke uh, about judging, a lot of people say, you can't judge me. There's a difference between judging and judgment. We are providing right. the word of God to keep you out of that judgment. All right. We got a book of judges. So don't come with right. that. Though you can't judge me. You got a book of judges. All right. Mm -hmm. But to let you know more that we love the unbeliever, mm -hmm. we're giving you the outline of what is to come. We chose to hop on the bandwagon of keeping the commandments. It's not that we're trying to be better right. than anybody, but we want to share that love the same right. way somebody shared it upon us to keep the commandments so we don't suffer the same demise. So great scriptures, brother, very inspirational. And by the way, I'm putting it in my lesson too, by the way. So thank you for those. Yes, sir. Answers. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I'm going to uh, pick it up here on the, on the anchor um, for the love, uh, the message of love to the unbeliever. Amen. And uh, the Lord, though, he emphatically loves his creation. And we know this because uh, the Lord tells us of Adam in Genesis 1. Let's read that Genesis 1, 26, brother, through uh, 30 for me, please. And we're going to skip somewhere in there. Go ahead. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, this is uh, something uh, that, you know, uh, Josh, brother Josh uh, had brought out and brother Al, I believe, but you know, it's that we know that the love just, I mean, the Lord just loved what he did because he, his creation, because he made and created a man in his own image, right? Let's go to uh, read uh, verse 28 for me, brother. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Skip to verse 30 for me, brother. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And he goes on to say in verse 31 that it was all good. He loved Adam so much that he gave him dominion. That's complete control over the rest of his creation and provided everything for man that he would need to thrive on this earth. And uh, the Lord's love is so vast for man that he even to this day, he says, if there's anything you need, just ask. Um, he says that in Matthew 7. Let's read Matthew 7 and 7 through 8, brother, please. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. He says that if you don't have what you need, just ask, just call on him. And he provides for the ones of his creation that he loves, but those also are the ones that love him. As, as told uh, by Jeremiah in Jeremiah 31, just how much he loved Jeremiah. Read Jeremiah 31 and three for me, brother. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Amen, amen. Just as he loved Jeremiah with an everlasting love. He loves us all the same. And he'll draw us uh, to him in that love. But there's the unbeliever that realizes not his love, that rejects his love. When the Lord has clearly instructed us in Exodus 20 about his love and the hate 
concerning him. Exodus 20, read three through six for me, brother. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. He says, make not any image or any likeness of anything. Because of his love for us, he is a jealous God. And those um, that do not love him, he will scrutinize every sin for, for generations. And they are those that shall perish. Let's read. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10 for me, brother, please. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Now, didn't the Lord say in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth and the life, and those uh, that perish no, not the love of the truth or the truth, because the truth is the Lord. Um, they know not his word because the unbeliever would rather be told lies than the truth. Let's look at what it says in Isaiah 30, uh, 9, 10, uh, through, 9 through 11 for me, brother, please. That this is a rebellious people, lying children children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. They say they will not hear the truth and they rather be told lies. They even say to put a stop to the love of the Lord and to cause it to cease from them. Uh, there are men that really work actively against his love because, you know, many of them are just straight up poses. They're fakers. You know, they know not the true love of the Lord. And they're always fronting as though they might possess some truth, but it's not God's truth. Uh, let's read Isaiah 29. And uh, Isaiah 29 and 13 for me, brother. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. And the precept of men teaches not the truth. They fake God's love. Loving one and hating another. The Lord uh, asked in uh, Matthew 5 and 3, why do you transgress the uh, commandments of God with your, with your traditions? This is what he's talking about. It's because they're faking it. But John wrote in John, 1 John 4 um, that the believer knows that God is love and the unbeliever is completely clueless. Let's go to 1 John 4 and read 7 um, through 11 for me, brother. We're going to skip in through there too. Go ahead. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Mm -hmm. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. If you don't know God, then you cannot know his love. Or you can't, or anybody else, or anybody love anyone else. So then he cannot love you if you don't know him. Let's read verse nine. Go ahead on. Brother. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, 
because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Amen. We must live through the Lord, through the son, because we know that the wages of sin is death. And this is the message that unbeliever misses out on, that the Lord God is not a God of the dead. He is a God of the living. So if you love the Lord, you know his love, you live. If you don't know it, you die. Simple as that. Read verse 10 and 11 for me, brother. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we are also to love one another. Love one another. Hmm. That's a concept, huh? This is the message to the <laughs> believer and the unbeliever, to the lover and the hater, to the ones, uh, you know, that have these, you know, that doesn't have this knowledge, but the message is that we should love one another. It's one of the greatest commandments of the Lord, too. Um, let's look at when the Pharisees asked the Lord about this in Matthew 22. We're going to start at uh, verse 36, brother, and read down to 40. We're going to skip through there. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Just as he told Jeremiah in 31, 13, yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Amen. Then we must love him in the same way with an everlasting love. This is the first commandment to love him with all our being. Okay, let's go to uh, and read 39 and 40 for me, brother, please. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love the ne thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang, hang all the law and the prophets. <clears throat> this is the second part of the greatest love in God's commandments. And you can't adhere to one without the other. Now let's go go back to uh, 1 John 4. Let's read verses 19 and 20, brother, please. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he, hath, for he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God who he hath not seen? The Lord says, how can you proclaim your love for me, whom you've never seen, but not love your neighbor? That's standing right there in front of your face. If you claim that you love the Lord, then you must have love for your brother or your sister. And anyone that knows the love of the Lord has to dwell in that love as also. Let's go to uh, first. Let's go back to verse 16 of 1 John 4. Please read that, brother. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. And if God is in you, then you'll also keep his commandments, just as he said in John uh, 14 and 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And he says um, we're to continue in that love because his love is also the Father's love. Let's read John 15 and 9, brother, please. Nine As the ten, Father right. hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And what the unbeliever doesn't seem to realize is that the Lord, through his love, he has thoughts of peace and, and blessings for us all, for all that believe not the turmoil and strife that the unbelievers have. Let's read Jeremiah 29 and 11 for me, please. 
For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Because the Father sacrifices his greatest love, being his only son, now salvation has come to all men. As it says, uh, which has been brought out before John 3 and 16. Read that, brother. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But for those unbelievers, their uh, you know, expected end, as mentioned in uh, Jeremiah 29, will be beyond the love of God. It'll be unto his wrath and his damnation. Let's read Matthew 25 and 46, brother. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. They shall go away into everlasting punishment. This is the message of love that's set before us all. Believer or non-believer, lover or hater alike, the love of the Lord with all, you have to love the Lord with all your heart. You have to love him with all your mind. You have to love him with all your soul, with all your being. And you also have to love your neighbor. And for the unbeliever, the Lord knows your expected end. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'll turn it back over to the panel. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Good stuff. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Bless the Lord. You know, um, it's, um, again, given scriptures out that seems like they're so condemning, they are actually coded in love. And and, and yes. when people understand that, the feeling of taking it personal goes away. The feeling of saying, well, you're trying to condemn me goes away. Earlier, uh, I was listening to a, a podcast and somebody said when the Lord says male and female created he them. They said, see, the them means a the transgender community, male, female, and transgender. <laughs> Stop it. He's letting you know that this is what I'm saying. This is who I'm dealing with. And we don't need to go outside of that. Don't add to my word now. So as you said, my brother, as you as we read, rather, that he lays all this out for people. And this is what we need to do. Because he's already determined the end. He is, he's God. So why not do what he says so you can reap the benefits of it? The best 401k plan ever is keeping mm -hmm. the commandments of God. Good stuff, brother. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yes, sir. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. And amen. Uh, we can't hear you, brother Alvin. We can't hear you. You're muted, brother. Nope, can't hear you now. Is there something? What happened to your mic, brother? Yeah, if I were to refresh or unmute. I hear a faint sound of his in the background. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Thanks for the great op Amen. observation, uh, Brother Josh. Uh, man, I mean, this whole Bible from the scriptures Brother Josh brought out, from the scriptures Brother Jedediah brought out, from the scriptures I brought out, it's like this whole Bible is a message of love, you know, to it those yeah. that, that, that don't believe this thing because eventually, you know, if you're walking in darkness or you're not in love, and and you walk in uh, opposite to God's precepts and His commandments, then you are an unbeliever. You know whether you know it or not. So His love is extended to us by giving us correction. You know and letting us know that we need to turn. I like when you pointed out that God loved us. You know even to create our own image. You know what I'm saying that's love and the love that you pointed out. When he gave Adam dominion over his nation. You see what I'm saying? And I like when you pointed out that whatever we need as a necessity, not what we want, what we need, just go and ask God. 
That's the love of God. And you yes, show sir. how he loved Jeremiah with an everlasting love. And the same for us if we fear him and keep his commandment because God is not a respecter of person. However, it is impossible to please God if you don't have faith in God or if you yes, God. Sir. So we just want to extend and this information to the brothers and sisters, you know, who find themselves disbelieving this thing, that you need to research this thing, evaluate this thing, evaluate yourself, because the Lord got an awesome plan and an awesome expected end for those that do love him, yes, as well as those that disbelieve. So I'm going to turn it back to the panel. Amen, amen, brother. Good, yes, good observation. Yes, yeah. Amen. amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. So yeah. we want to thank Brother Judah for his excellent reading. We want to amen. thank Brother amen. Josh, our guest teacher praise from Birmingham, uh, <clears throat> Al G, coming down here, blessing us with this title through the true and living God. Amen. And uh, yes, that the people was edified. We want to thank Brother Jedediah for his part that he contributed to this uh, episode. And we just want to exhort to you, you guys, excuse me, to, to the people, to the world, to the brothers and sisters that's viewing this uh, episode. Fear God, keep his commandments, and you can't yes, go wrong with Jesus and his word. Until the next time, peace. And thank you, my brother, for contributing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, sirs. Amen. From leaning not on our own understanding to casting down wicked imaginations, we're here to study to show ourselves approved here a little and there a little. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Stick to the Script. Let's read the Bible now.